We are here with Happy Times in Noisy Village, and we have made it to the last chapter, page 112, chapter 14. Midsummer in Noisy Village. Let's finish this book up. And now the last thing I want to tell you about is what we did on Midsummer Eve, the 23rd of June. In the South Farm Meadow, we had a Midsummer Pole. Everybody in the whole village helped, helped to make it. First, we rode way out into the forest in our wagon to pick leaves that we were going to use. Daddy drove, and even Kirsten was allowed to come along. She was so happy that she laughed and laughed. Here's the picture, collecting leaves. <clears throat> Olaf gave her a little branch to hold in her hand and she sat and waved it back and forth. And Olaf sang this old song for her. Kristen had a little gold coach in which she was going to ride a little Gold whip she held in the air and greeted each passer with smiles so fair. All the rest of us sang too. Agda had come along to help us pick, pick leaves and she sang, now it is summer, now there is sunshine, now there are flowers and leaves. When we came home from the forest, Agda, Britta, Anna, and I picked a bunch of lilacs from the bushes behind our woodshed. Then we took them over to the South Farm Meadow where Oscar and Callie had already cut the pole. We tied the leaves all around the pole and hung two big wreaths of lilacs from the crossbar at the top. Then we raised the pole and danced around it. Uncle Eric, Anna's daddy, played the accordion well and he played a lot of tunes for us all to dance to, all except Grandfather and Kirsten. Grandfather sat in a chair and Kirsten sat in his lap at first, but she couldn't keep from pulling his beard, so her daddy put her up on his shoulders. In that way, Kirsten could dance with us too. Poor Grandfather couldn't dance, but I don't think he was sorry. He just said, my, oh my, it seems longer than yesterday that I danced around a midsummer pole. There's all the kids gathered around grandfather. Then we all sat down in the grass and drank coffee that mommy and Aunt Greta and Aunt Lisa had made. We had buns and cookies too. Grandfather drank three cups of coffee because that's something he really likes. Coffee is something I have to have, he says. I don't like it at all, but when you drink it while sitting in the grass in midsummer, it tastes much better than usual. We played the last pair out and a lot of other games. It's such fun when the mommies and daddies play with us. It would probably not be so much fun if we had to play with them every day. But when it's midsummer, I think they should be allowed to play too. Skip ran around and barked while we played. I think he thought it was fun too. We were allowed to stay up just as long as we wanted to that evening. Agda said if you climbed over nine fences before you went to bed, and if you picked nine kinds of flowers, and put them under your pillow, you dream at night about the one you would marry. Britta and Anna and I thought it would be lots of fun to climb over nine fences, although we already knew who we were going to marry. I am going to marry Olaf, and Britta and Anna are going to marry Carl and Bill. <laughs> are you going to climb over nine fences? Carl said to Britta. Well, go ahead by all means but please dream about someone else but me. Not that I'm superstitious, but it might help. Yes, let's hope you don't dream about us, Bill said. 
Yes, let's hope, certainly hope so, Olaf said. The boys don't want to marry us. Agnes said that you had to be very quiet while you climbed over the fences. You couldn't laugh or talk at all the whole time. If you can't talk the whole time, Lisa, Carl said, then you might as well all go to bed. Why, I said. Because you can't climb nine fences in two minutes, and you've never been quiet longer than that in your life. Except the time you had the mumps, of course. We didn't pay any attention to the boys, but just started climbing. We began with the fence around the South Farm Meadow and came into the birch woods behind it. It's strange in the woods when it's dark. Well, it wasn't perfectly dark, just rather twilightish and still. It was very quiet because the birds had stopped chirping and it smelled so good from all the trees and flowers. We each picked a flower when we had climbed over the first fence. There is one thing that I don't understand, and that's why you always get the giggles when you know that you're not supposed to laugh. As soon as we climbed over the first fence, we started. The boys came climbing after us just to tease us and make us laugh. Don't step in the mud puddle. Bill said to Anna. There's no puddle, Anna said, but then she remembered that she wasn't supposed to talk. Then Britta and Anna and I giggled and the boys laughed out loud. Remember, you can't giggle like that, Carl said. Then we giggled still more and the boys ran around us and pulled our hair and pinched our arms to make us laugh. We couldn't say anything because we weren't supposed to talk. Ooh, blah, 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 Carl said. It wasn't a bit funny, really, but Britta and Anna and I couldn't keep from laughing. I stuffed, stuffed my handkerchief in my mouth, but that didn't help. My laughter came chirping out anyway. But when we had climbed over the ninth fence and picked our ninth flowers, we stopped laughing and we were just mad at the boys for spoiling everything for us. I put the flowers under my pillow anyway. I had a buttercup and a bird's foot and a bluebell and a daisy and an almond flower and a rock rose and a violet and two other flowers that I don't know the names of. I didn't dream anything at all that night and I'm certain that it was because those silly boys had made us laugh. But I'm going to marry Olaf anyway. So there. And that is the end of Happy Times in Noisy Village. I hope you enjoyed listening to the book as much as I enjoyed reading it. This author is um, the author who wrote Pippi Longstocking, if you are familiar with that character. She's very fun, funny, adventurous. Um, but this is one of her lesser well-known books and it's still from the point of view of children. And so it, even though it's just kind of their day-by-day -day life, they still have lots of funny adventures and funny ways of looking at things. And I just really enjoy this book. So thanks so much for reading it along with me. And we'll see you for the next one.